Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters is beginning right now. Online presenters provide a supportive and positive learning experience to help our members develop communications and leadership skills. We want to help them specifically work on their online presentations. So guests, please note that in order to be a member of the club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International, and you should have completed six official speeches. If you have just demonstrated so much speaking ability, you can come to our club and present a two to three minute speech during one of the meetings, and then we can vote on you becoming a member of the club. So if you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure that it shows your name and any role you're playing tonight. Simply right click and select rename in order to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. So as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of your language and word usage so that you would not be considered offensive or insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note we are recording this meeting and your video and audio might contribute to our club marketing purposes. And if you're not speaking, please mute your microphone. I am going to put in chat a download of our agenda, but right now we want to welcome to the virtual stage our club president, DTM Lou Brown, over to you. Thank you, Madam Sergeant at Arms. Hello, everyone. Happy President's Day here in the United States. I'm not sure if there are any holidays in the rest of the world. It seems every day we have a holiday. When I look on like holiday of the day, there's always something going on around the world, which is wonderful. But of course, we only have 365 days and so many things to celebrate, so I'm not surprised. But again, welcome everyone to our weekly meeting. We have a rather intimate group today, but nonetheless, it's going to be an exciting, and educational and entertaining meeting, I am sure. We have two speakers, which to me says that all of us should have a chance to speak in whatever segment that uh, may it may be called for. Okay, our initial item is one of our newer items, tip of the day. If any of you have not been here over the past, has it been two or three weeks at this point? I can't remember. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I should probably say, please welcome to the stage now our Toastmaster of the day, which is me, of course. I'll we'll take off one hand, put on the other hand. And, and let's kick things off. We, For those of you who have not been with us for the past two, three weeks, again, I forgot how many we've had so far. I think it's been two. We have a new segment called the Tip of the Day, and our Tip of the Day person who will be sharing with us a skill, a tech tip, something of that sort, will be our none other than Toastmaster Graham Cairns, who has Tipmaster on his role. I see that. Wonderful. Mr. Cairns, would you like to take the stage or do you have an introduction or anything title that we, you would like me to share? Okay, very good. Timer, three to five minutes on the clock, please. And we will get to official role introductions after our tip of the day. I'm going to kind of handle it that way. Take it away, sir. Fabulous. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Quick question before I begin. Who here has done the Create a Podcast project in Pathways? Who here has considered doing the Create a Podcast? Can I ask what has stopped you from doing so? Let me give you a, actually, because we're going to run out of time if I spend too much time, let me guess, it's because you don't know quite how to do it. Is that a fair assessment? You're worried about the technical reservations? Okay, so what we're going to look at today is some of the technical things, technical skills, technical software and hardware to make it possible to create a podcast. Most people, when they start to create a podcast, don't know what they can use. I asked for screen share for a specific reason. It's because I want to be able to show you a bit of, or a, a website, if you like, that will make it so much simpler if you wish to create a podcast. 
you should now be seeing my screen, which shows Anchor by Spotify. Is that a correct assessment? You can see the Anchor screen. And it says dashboard and episodes and money and new episode. Anchor.fm is a website which is now owned by Spotify, which allows you to create a podcast using absolutely no equipment other than what you are currently using for this meeting. That is, all you need is a microphone, and that microphone can even be built into the webcam which you're currently using. You don't need editing software. You don't need anything else. You can create it simply by clicking, let's do it, and it'll let you record audio right from your browser. It'll let you add songs from Spotify if you wish to add those songs. Now, the moment that you do that, I've got to tell you, your podcast can only be hosted by Spotify. You can't have it hosted anywhere else. That's a limitation, but it is free. And that's something which is actually really quite cool. So if you want to do it simply, that's the way to do it. The microphone which I use when I'm creating podcasts, or at least the microphone which I use when, when I am online, is my trusty Rode podcaster microphone. It's the NT-USB. It's a really nice microphone. I love it. It's just making clunking noises because I'm moving it. But that's not that's suitable for a podcast if I'm the only one that's going to be talking. And who here has heard a podcast where there is only one person who's been talking? Have they been able to keep your attention for the full 30 minutes or hour or whatever of the podcast? Yes, sometimes, sometimes not. I was doing a half hour podcast where I was the only person talking and quite frankly, People were bored by the time I had finished my 30 minutes. And so uh, my listening audience shrank week by week until uh, I was down to about six people and they were family. And the only reason they were listening because they felt they had to. The microphone, which I would use if I were going to be talking to somebody else in a podcast, is my Yeti. Now, this particular Yeti Pro I use for a specific reason. Lovely looking microphone, as you can see. It's all, you know. But the reason that I use this is on the back, this particular one has settings. It is currently set for recording from one direction only because that's what I use for my voiceover business. But if I want to use this as a podcast microphone, I can set it up using a little setting here, which allows whoever is speaking to this side of the microphone and whoever is speaking to the other side of the microphone you can both be heard at the same time. One other thing, you can hear the noise in the background, I suspect. There's a, some construction going on at a house a couple of doors down. When I'm doing my podcasts, I have a shirt box, you know, the sort of shirt box that you buy from your local Walmart or whatever. And I've just shoved a whole lot of acoustic foam in there. I stick the microphone in this and that effectively becomes, it's not a soundproof room, but it baffles the sound coming from outside because you don't need a whole room to be soundproofed. You just need the microphone to be in a soundproofed area. That's a cheap and effective way of giving you something that's muted. If you're going to create a podcast, I would suggest you should also get yourself a copy of Audacity. It's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. It is a recording software. This is a really simple to use recording software called Audacity. It's free, it works easily, and if you stuff up, I mean, if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake, you can just correct it. Let me show you what I just did then. So I'm going to take the bit off the beginning that I didn't want. This is a really simple to use recording software called Audacity. It's free, it works easily, and if you stuff up, I mean, if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake, you can just correct it. So if you want to take out, and if you stuff up, I mean, if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake, you can just correct it. You can just, I just highlight it and delete it. It works easily. If you make a mistake, you can just correct it. And it is as simple as that to edit. If you can edit, cut and paste in a Word document, you can use Audacity. It's free, it's easy, it's available. It's a great tool. That's my red light. I'm going to shut up. Mr. Toastmaster.
Thank you very much, Mr. Tipmaster. Wonderful. I actually had started uh, working with someone on a podcast, so this is actually timely and interesting and very valuable information. So thank you very much for that. And by the way, if anyone sees me kind of looking this way, it's only because I now have my own camera set up over here. And I'm so such a habit of looking at my webcam that I keep forgetting my new cameras over there. Uh, so good thing I'm not speaking because I'm sure it would be the top of the list in terms of the evaluation. Okay, very good. So as I mentioned, when I first started as the Toastmaster, that we have a few speakers. So it, with that in mind, we can go through the roles and have everyone tell us a little bit about what their role is. I know there have been a couple of fill-ins, so bear with me if I don't get everything straight here, but let's start with our timer. Andre Smalenko, please share with us what your role is as a timer. Thank you very much, Lou. Uh, hello, fellow online presenters and guests. I'm Andre, I'm your timer for this evening. I have a very important job because I will be timing your speeches your table topics and evaluations. And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to use old fashioned mobile phone, probably it's invisible, and I'll time you. I just give you some rough ideas how I'm going to do it. So for example, for prepared speeches, we have two today. Uh, when a speaker is speaking for five minutes, then I press the green on my background. After six minutes, you will see yellow, and after seven minutes, you can see red, and you will have 30 seconds to wrap up your speech. It's slightly different for table topics. Table topics, impromptu speaking, you will, hear, you will see green lights after one minute, yellow after one minute and 30, and two minutes red. For evaluations, two minutes green, two minutes 30 yellow, and three minutes red. And I suggest you drag me on your screen into the top left corner. It's the convenient place for the timer on the screen. And pay attention, I will be timing. Back to you, uh, Lou. Thanks, sir. Appreciate that. Two items real quick before we go to our next helper. One is, if you are not speaking, please mute your microphone. I hear a bit of keyboard chatter in the background. And two, if you have any feedback for Graham, please put that in the chat. We don't have a formal evaluation for the tip master. However, I'm sure he would love to hear what you enjoyed about his speech and perhaps some ways that he may improve that for any potential future engagement he may use that for. Okay, we're going to go on to our ah counter, Marty. Now I understand, Marty, you don't have video. That's fine. Please, it looks like you may be unmuted. Feel free to share what your role is as ah counter. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. As a counter, I will listen rather carefully to everything, particularly for people who throw in crutch words or crutch phrases like ah, um, er, just to have a long pause, or any of about 10 other words, the Toastmasters International lists. But if I think you're using one of them strictly as a fill-in, I will note that. And I hope that maybe I'll get most of it right for once. Back to you. I am very confident you will get it all right, Marty. And welcome back, by the way. Glad to see, well, I was gonna say glad to see you, but glad to hear you and to know that you're doing better, my friend. We are moving on to our grammarian, who just a quite a, a slight, um, Full pie did. Uh, I sent our grammarian a, a text and I asked, Graham, do you have an introduction for your tip master speech? <laughs> See, I should be wearing my glasses and yet I am. So I must need a new prescription because I, I saw a grammarian instead of Graham. Anyway, please share with us what your role is as grammarian and what our word of the day is, sir. Mr. Jim Barber. Mr. Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters, that's quite all right. I've been called worse. As the grammarian this evening, I am going to be, well, let me put it like this. You're probably familiar with Siri. You're probably familiar with Alexa. Shut up. 
I am going to be, I am the online presenter's equivalent of those two services. I am going to be listening to intently to everyone tonight. I will be taking notes. And at the end of the meeting, I will be making a list. I will be reporting back on any exceptional or egregious uses of the English language. That's it, back to you. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have our watcher, Mr. David Carr. Uh, you're muted, sir. I'll just check in the book. While Jim is listening, I will be watching you very closely to see what you're doing visually that is either positive or negative or maybe just weird. All those. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you. It actually reminds me of like the folks who look through the uh, peephole in the door as they're trying to see the delivery person come up. Very cool. Okay, our next role helper is our chat monitor, Toastmaster April Elize. Thanks, Mr. Toastmaster. My role as the chat monitor is to keep track of the various posts throughout the meeting that's located within our chat. When called upon at the end of the meeting, I will give my report. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Last but not least, our vote counter, Mr. Rick Derling. I will be counting votes and I will post a link in the chat that you can use to cast your vote as we get to that point in the meeting. And then I will present the results as appropriate. Thank you and back to you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you everyone for those introductions. Appreciate that. We are now going to go on to the first segment of the three, the prepared speech segment. Our first speaker, Tricia Smith. Just make sure I have the order correct, Tricia, and then Angela, correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, Tricia, who recently completed a path, I believe, correct? Not all that long ago. So, wow, you're on a roll, ma'am. Way to go. <laughs> Tricia is speaking from the Visionary Communication Pathway Level 4, Building Skills, Managing Projects Successfully. I'm not sure if I got that right. It sounded a little odd to me, but I know it's somewhere in there. This is your second speech. So it's the, sounds like you do a speech, get feedback, get another speech sort of thing. Okay. And your speech is five to seven minutes. This speech by Tricia Smith includes information about what the member has learned from what she has learned from planning, building a team and leading the team through the completion of her project. Please welcome Toastmaster Tricia Smith with Collaborative Connection Stellar Circle. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I'm going to start this out by asking a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you're working with a professional who has the same job role that you do one-on-one -on -one and have had frustration with communication? I have learned that you can have a little bit of frustration with communication, not to mention virtual communication, which is the only platform used, when you don't have even one out of two people cooperating. How frustrating. So what have I learned with this project? I'm gonna describe the project. I'm gonna give you a little summary because I did the first part with the previous speech. I'll try to do it quickly because I could really drag on. The project has not ended. So when I did the first part, it was the beginning of a new project for the school. I work for an online school, 100% remote, 100% virtually. So I have not met almost everyone in the whole school. <laughs> it's a pretty good sized school, many programs. It is a medical career school. So we were partnered through leadership with leads. I'm a lead with a certain program and I was partnered with another lead from another program to oversee a group of about 25 faculty mix of adjunct part-time faculty and full-time faculty. The purpose is this is a theme of the year of the instructor. Woo, how empowering to instructors. To us who work in the field with the students, it's empowering because they have never given us that voice. So this is a new, new idea for us to have a voice in the process. As a lead, 
I, I'm helping to facilitate our circle. We have topics for each quarter that coordinate with our roundtables that are upcoming at the end of each quarter. And our topic is reading strategies. The purpose is to come up with reading strategies this quarter to implement in our courses because we are going 100% digital. The students will not have hard textbooks anymore unless they wanna purchase them themselves. Guess what? It started today. <laughs> we have course starts about twice a month and they're five week courses. Okay, there's the background. Now, here's my experience. When I did the first part of my, my uh, speech, I was partnered with this person. I actually got to be introduced to this other lead previously outside of this project as a buddy, an optional interaction uh, opportunity that the school had for anybody who wanted to just partner with somebody else outside of our own work task and group, that kind of thing. So we weren't introduced and it's that's as far as it went then. So now we're partnered with this project. Great. Our task was to prepare for the main circle meeting, um, which took place February 7th. So when I did the first part of the speech, we did not have that meeting. We had an in-service in between. So it introduced all the tools that are available within the online platform that we are using within the courses. So the goal was to have an hour meeting, use the presentation template that was provided, use the note-taking document that was provided by leadership. There's about 16 circles. We're only one of them. Vote on a circle name, vote on a full-time instructor to help the leads, me being one of them. So our original meeting, it was just between me and the other lead. Every single communication was an issue for that person. And I, I, I'm not a blame person. I like to, let's just get the job done, right? We're here to do the job, get it done. What do we need to do? Let's be efficient, work smarter, not harder. I'm very thorough with my communication. I use multiple methods. I'm very, yeah, super thorough. And very wordy sometimes with my communication. I'm so thorough. <laughs> I always like to back up my sources of information, etc. So what I also learned is there's even on a professional level, there was some miscommunication. So we're given in service, we're given exposure to all the tools, we're supposed to vote on a, uh, a circle name, that was easy, uh, vote on three strategies. Okay, we had good discussion, the meeting went great. Um, <laughs> but in between preparing for that, that wasn't that was difficult just communicating with one person to get to that point that was my experience and then afterwards now we have the full time instructor in the picture. No problem with that person no problem with anybody but just there were comments and issues with how to meet when to meet why we shouldn't have the whole group involved with the whole process instead of we're meeting monthly to replace our faculty meetings. We only need to meet with the big circle once once a month and in between we are working together to get to the next step. Well, that was a problem and that's kind of where it got stuck and it's been stuck there since last Thursday. So uh, we did get to the point where we developed our what are called learning support tools, our documents. We split that up and had that communication um, and today everything was supposed to be implemented. Well, it didn't get implemented yet. So again, I reached out about the sixth time and I've done a lot of the background information, a lot of the background task to get us and keep us on task. We have a Teams channel within Microsoft for administration and for each circle. I, I did all of that background work for our group. I've communicated within the team. I'm a person that's very active. Like, let's go, let's go. Let's get that communication going. Let's work together. Um, so I'm still waiting on that person to give me replies. And we were supposed to implement our tools today in our courses. And then the goal is to get now what's the result of how it affects students, how the students are using those tools and then prepare for our next meeting. So we'll see if she acts on this tomorrow. Maybe she thought today was a holiday because it's President's Day. Unfortunately for our school, it was not. So what I have learned is it can be kind of frustrating. I'm still working through it, just trying to be patient. I'm learning to be more patient <laughs> with, with somebody else and letting them have their timeline to reply on how they do it and it's gonna work out anyway, right? So I won't have a third part follow up to this, but I'm I'm expecting it to be smooth and good and successful. And that's my story in process. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster Tricia Smith. You know what? Feel free to share with us later on how things go and maybe another speech. <laughs> I'm sure we'd love to hear it. Wonderful. Thank you again. Our second speaker is our Sergeant at Arms, Angela Heath, who will be speaking 
from the presentation mastery. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. Okay. From the presentation mastery pathway level three, increasing knowledge, persuasive speaking. Angela is persuading a university to incorporate guest lectures on the gig economy for the School of Business. Her speech is also five to seven minutes. Please welcome Angela Heath with the gig economy. Don't miss it. Toastmaster Angela Heath. Professors, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the presentation today. Because we all know that there's a, there's a place for what we're talking about. There is a place for the gig economy. We all know that things have changed. We know that not only have things changed, we know that it has changed numerous times. Started back in the Industrial Revolution, everyone knows about it, how people then knew how to do everything that they were doing on their own. They knew how to sell who they were and what they had to offer in the marketplace. But then when the Industrial Revolution came about, it stripped people of that ability and identity to make income on their own. And I call it a psychological identity theft. Now, we have to be aware of the fact that where we are right now, we are in the information age and information is moving faster than the speed of light. We know that traditional employment has taken a lot of blows recently. Some people say that it's even dead or dying. Some people say no. What I say is that it's on life support. So think about it. Think about it. We're in a season in our history where you are the market. The students are the market. And so with that being said, I have so many examples. You asked for examples of how other universities are doing it, how other college students are doing it. Take these two ladies. They're from a third world country because they got into the gig economy. They're now considered millionaires in their country in four short years. And look at this gentleman. He started an online event with 7,000 people all about an autoimmune disease trying to help his mom. The next meeting he had had 15,000 and he was able to monetize that effort by doing masterminds. And now he has a very lucrative business. Take this young gentleman, he found a market gap. He figured out that there was space for people on college campuses to have this Wikipedia page because they were getting lost with the millions of communication tools they have available. And look at this. Some of you said, there's no future in this. This gentleman in 2015 started a online gig marketplace. No employees in five short years, $76 million dollars. So this is the question that I have to you faculty. My question is, are we setting our kids up for yesteryear? Or are you ready to set your kids up for today? You know, I have so many examples. I mean, look at this. Would this guy have been able to prosper in your university with a pet rock? multi-million dollar idea, crazy, a rock inside of a box. But these are the kinds of things that we need to be aware of, that the school needs to be aware of. There's this huge marketplace, online marketplace, and it's not just Uber and Lyft and delivery, which is what some of you guys think. There are places in this marketplace where they pull from the top 10% of experts in the world and they farm it out to the top 50 corporations in the world. 
people are building gig pyres. That's what I call when they are building an empire. Sometimes it's a micro-sized business. They're earning without employees. So aren't we doing the students a disservice when we tell them we're preparing you to get a job in huge corporate America? When 40% of corporate executives are telling us that they're gonna start pulling more from the gig economy. Are we doing the students a disservice when we are telling them the only kind of company you can build is a huge company. It has to be huge. You've gotta come up with the next TikTok or the next Facebook. No, because people have figured out how to build these gig pyres, multiple millions of dollars, sometimes no employees, sometimes one or two, all because of the gig economy. So what I'm saying to you is it doesn't even matter what nation. Here's a guy who went to school for engineering, never used it. He got into the gig economy. He does PowerPoints only for startups. Startups spend thousands of dollars on their PowerPoints. He's now a millionaire in the Middle East. So what I'm saying to you, don't get stuck in this old paradigm where you're doing the students a disservice. Now, I'm not suggesting that you change the curriculum, but what I am suggesting is that you would have more guest speakers to prepare them for it, to explain the opportunities that are available to them because the gig economy professors is here to stay. Back to you. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Heath. Wonderful presentation, really enjoyed that. And it is amazing, I will say, I'm, I'm actually self-employed right now and thinking about, well, maybe I'll do a little side job back at corporate America, but you know what? Who wants to go back there, huh? We should all be starting our own gig companies. Okay, anyway, we are all done with the prepared speech segment of our meeting. We are gonna now roll into table topics. Before we do that, timer, did our speakers qualify? Yes. Yes, uh, all two speakers qualified have uh, posted their times in the chat box. Thanks, sir. Appreciate that. Please send your vote for best speaker over to our vote counter, Mr. Rick Durling. Please use the Fair link guarantee. I provided. Thank you. We're guaranteed, guaranteed to have a gold and silver medalist at today's Toastmaster meeting. We are now going to go into table topics. Our club treasurer will be high. Uh, will be highlighting the table topic session. Please welcome Toastmaster Pamela Benjamin. Thank you, Lou. We are moving into the table topics portion of the meeting, and we will be talking about scientists. Isaac Newton said, "If I have seen further, it is because it is by standing on the shoulders of giants." by standing on the shoulders of giants. What do you think about that, April? Have you stood on the shoulders of giants? Can you tell us about a giant whose shoulders you stood on? Good day, fellow Toastmasters. Standing on the shoulders of giants. There have been opportunities throughout my life and what I would say is I had a leader once and I felt like I was, I guess my leadership at one time at a previous job, I felt as if I was standing on the shoulder of giants when it came to trying to get my point across, when I wanted to present different ideals that I felt that were more fort moving and they had already done these things and they know that their established way of doing things was the way that they want it to continue, but I want it to, I want it to share new ideas. Like, okay, my generation, this is what I feel that we should do. So in order, I mean, all said and done, 
I felt like I was standing on the shoulder to giants because I felt as though there was there was a disconnect, but I felt at the end I was able to prosper and I was able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish with the giants that I was standing on the shoulders of. Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Our tabletop at master, sorry. Tabletop master, thank you. Who has not had a role? I think I see a couple of people, but their cameras are off. So Brid Bridget, Burkett, are you there? I'm here. Okay, here you go. This is, this is a quote by Jane Goodall. You can go through, you cannot go through us a single day without making an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference. You just have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. What do you think about making differences every day, Birgit? I do believe and agree that everyone makes a difference every day. Now that impact can be either positive or it can be negative. Because if we're stressed, sometimes we tend to lash out at people or I need this right now at work or where is this or you're late with that. And that has an impact of creating a more negative environment when it comes to collaboration. Um, or you can make an impact by being more positive in your collaboration. And I'm going to use work as another example, being able to contribute, being able to work together with your team and really bouncing ideas back and forth to each other. So making that environment more positive is definitely super helpful. And that goes out to our personal lives as well, because with families and with friends, and things like that, if we're stressed, we tend to latch out. And then that then has a ripple effect that they'll probably be in a worse mood. And then we'll lash out to, to other people and they'll lash out to other people. So we get this complete ripple effect. And then if we put positivity out to the world, um, there's a great saying that I found once on Facebook. It says, excuse my language, Karma is only a bitch if you are. And I feel that is very true because if we put positivity out there, even, even if things are running late, even if they're not running perfectly smoothly, we'll all find a way to get through and solve problems together and make each other feel better in the process. Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you. If a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, then what is an empty desk a sign of, Mr. Dr. Byrne? What is an empty desk a sign of, Dr. Byrne? Empty desk is a sign of an individual that has nothing to do or doesn't know how to do it. I was always impressed with the cluttered desk. And the person that epitomized that was my professor in medical school. His name is Harold at Lyons. And he would have a desk that was six foot long and four and a half foot wide. And he'd have articles from different magazines, medical magazines, that were piled up about a foot and a half high. And if you ever went to him in his office and said, I don't quite understand how this problem works or this disease pattern works, he would take his hand, almost like a magician, and dive it into the pile and pull out the paper that he wants you to read. He says, this paper will answer all your questions. And I was amazed by that. It was like he did card tricks or something. There was a big table. Imagine this. There must have been four or 500 articles on the table, spread out six feet wide, four foot high, three foot wide. And he could find where every paper was whenever someone had a question. That always amazed me. Thank you very much, Table Topics Master. Thank you. I guess it's true then, isn't it? It is true. David Carr, what is this? And what should it do next? Should it go to Mars? Should it be a submarine? It's a Tesla, David. <laughs> All right. Well, there, there is somewhere in deep Earth orbit, a Tesla that, that is flying around. Anybody remember the, the heavy metal uh, animated movie 
I'm, 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 I'm dating myself. This is probably from the late 1980s, but, uh, but there was something with a, uh, a Corvette being dropped from orbit and landing in the middle of the desert uh, with uh, parachutes billowing out and back. And that's sort of what I think Elon Musk uh, instantiated is he took one of the, the early Teslas and he took his spaceship company, SpaceX, that, you know, if you haven't noticed, has sort of taken over the, what used to be done by people like the Apollo program. And he took the booster and as a test, they fired an old Tesla out into deep space and it's tooling around out there right now. And it's probably gonna coll collide with something important one of these days. Uh, and uh, then uh, you'll have to come look for him and see if you can get him sued for that. And so, yes, there's a, there's a Tesla on the way to Mars. I don't think it's gonna make it there in one piece. Uh, it's probably outgassing all the uh, the things in the, in the in the backs of the seats and the plastics uh, and coming apart at the seams even now while it's baking in the hot sun of deep space and freezing in the cold on the other side of the object in deep space right this moment. Madam Tabletop is master. Thank you, David. My son's a physics major, and when he was home, we were on Zoom, and the doctor that he was talking to, they were going to send something up in orbit, and I told him, whatever you do, make it really fun so you get on social media. And he said, you know, that's my top priority. I said, good. I'm glad you're working out for the program and for my son. My next one is here. You are going on a journey. Guess where this is? It's not Arizona. No, it's not Arizona. Mary Ann, you're going to Mars. What are you going to bring with you? Good evening, and thank you for that question, Pamela. I actually cannot see the picture, but let me see. Oh, now I can. If I am going to Mars, hmm, I think I need a few creature comforts with that environment. So I think I'll need a lot of uh, sunscreen and lotions and things of that nature. Uh, I'd probably bring a backpack that had a tent and a, a bedroll or something of that nature, but it's pretty desolate there. So I don't really see myself even going there. I think I am going to head to the beach instead because Mars really isn't my cup of tea, not into the outer space thing. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. If you want to have good ideas, you must have many ideas. What do you think about that, Rick Derling? Good evening, fellow online presenters. This is an interesting question from my perspective, because it's definitely tied into the concept of if you have ideas, even if they fail, one of them is likely to actually succeed. Consider the whole philosophical question of putting, say, a thousand monkeys in a room with typewriters. The odds of actually creating something that's readable are quite high. The odds of actually creating a great novel, maybe not as high, but it is a potential. So if you really want the opportunity, have a lot of ideas, try them out. Because in the act of trying, you'll discover things you just didn't know. It can be as simple as that. Try it, it doesn't work, try again. You want a great example of that? Consider the light bulb. Edison actually went through, I don't remember how many, but it was well over a thousand iterations before he came up with a working light bulb. That is a great example of why, if you're going to have an idea, have a lot of them and try them out. 
because the price of failure, quite frankly, is success. Back to you, Madam Table Topics. Thank you, Rick. The important thing is to never stop questioning. The important thing is to never stop questioning. What do you think about that, Lucas Califel? I think that is very profound and very important. It's essentially how we learn, that is how we know what we know. I think the technical term is epistemology. How do you know what you know? And through questioning, through rigor, through Edison, questioning why doesn't this light bulb work is how he was able to eventually create a working light bulb. This is how we improve processes. This is how we change the way things are done. We have to question if they are working, if they are achieving the outcome that we wish to see. In other instances, people will question you or your company or your idea, basically telling you that, hey, this is not working as well as it should, or I have some ideas that can help improve it, or what if you try doing this? What if you try doing that? It's part of the scientific process. Science and what knowledge is created is through questioning, challenging the status quo, challenging authorities, reviewing information, getting information, testing things, testing hypotheses. This basically is the foundation for a society that is progressing. When we stop questioning, that's when things will either stay the same and more likely than not get worse. Back to you. Thank you. Grammar cop Jim Barber. Will our next great scientist be artificial intelligence? Will our next great scientist be made from artificial intelligence? So, uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you, Madam Topics Master. Everybody is all excited about artificial intelligence. I'm more concerned about finding real intelligence. That there is, seems to be a serious lack of that around sometimes, especially if you go on social media. I, I'm just astounded sometimes at the incredible lack of real intelligence. But there's no denying that artificial intelligence is coming along. Will the next great scientist be based on artificial intelligence? I think that's already occurring. I don't think they, they are liking to admit it, because artificial intelligence doesn't author papers, they don't, there's no ego involved. I, I think that there's more being done with artificial intelligence than people are giving credit to. However, I don't think this, we're talking about just general science. Genius science, like for example, Einstein, who you had up a moment ago, I don't think that has anything to do with intelligence. Einstein was intelligent, but Einstein was creative. Einstein had was inspired. And those are things, those are qualities that artificial intelligence will never, I don't think, never be able to develop. So I think artificial intelligence is a serious consideration in science, in sales, in just about everything, but I don't think it will ever replace genius. Madam Topics Master. Thank you. This is a two screen question. There we have the scientist mixing things. Who do you think he is? Does anyone know? Starts with Louie. Uh, science knows past year, yeah. Lou, yes, n science knows no country because knowledge illuminates the world. Because science belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. Louis Pasteur. Can you give a, tell us what you think about that, Lang Zing? Science knows no country because knowledge illuminates 
the world. And knowledge belongs to humanity. I think I had a little overlap there. But you talk about science belonging to no country. Ling Zing. Are you there? Okay. Me? Are you calling me? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So it's a great topic, first of all. Science knows no country because knowledge illuminates the world. Well, I'm not sure this statement is covers everything. It's the it's what everybody thinks is truth or not, because even science has no country, but a scientist has a country, especially in today's world, the competition among countries are very fierce. And uh, there is competition and then also espionage because of the, the trade secret and because everybody wants to get, get ahead and uh, to gain from the science financially and also in the societal levels. So I don't think uh, uh, it's absolutely true that science has no country because, well, just simply because science belongs to a country. Back to you, Mandam Topic Math. And I think that is it for tonight. So we had April, we had Bridget, we had Andy, we had David, and we had Jim Barber, and we had Ling Sing. Those are our speakers. If you want to vote, back to you, Toastmaster. Was, was Rick on that list? He, he Rick, Rick. Yeah. It was a long list. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> it was a long list. Thank you. I was going to say, I think the list is probably going to pop up any moment now. Thank you, Pamela. Wonderful set of topics. I'm trying to think of how I can incorporate the word of the day here. So many inventions, I believe, were noted in some of them. Uh, the best I can do. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Thank you again. And by the way, Marianne, I could have swore I did see a Starbucks somewhere in the distance in that picture of Mars. So, you know, they're everywhere. Okay, we're going to go on to the last segment of our meeting, the general evaluation section. Marion will tell us more what that's about and host the segment. Take it away, Marion. Hi, good evening, my friends. Uh, and I won't go into a big explanation of the GE role because there are no guests here tonight. So we all know the scoop on what's going on. But we'll get right down to it. What I'm going to do is invite Lee Sing Zhu to come on down and evaluate Trisha Smith's speech for this evening. Please put your hands together for Lee Singh. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, especially Toastmaster Trisha Smith. It's a great speech overall. Uh, Trisha's speech, the, she's tried to describe the process of her practicing, build a team, develop a plan, and uh, accomplish the plan through teamwork with the help of her team, of course. And in that sense, she certainly accomplished her goal. She, in her speech, she gave a very detailed information about how she has team up with 25 of faculty members and, and develop a project and she partner with other project lead together to implement this project. And this is a still an ongoing project. And also she described that what type of lesson she learned from all this process, which is be patient. I think the message is great. And some of her strengths I want to highlight is number one, her speech is very informational because she gave a detailed description of all this process of developing project, developing team and collaboration and the issues and frustrations. Number two, her develop delivery is very uh, strong, which is re reflected in her Tone, her tone is very conversational 
and also her use of the pause very nicely and her vocal variety is superb and also her voice is magnetic and her speech is very clear. Just a few things I would say she could work on is that I feel like the process when she, you, she described is a bit, bit made to detail and uh, can be organized in uh, several paragraphs, which uh, structure better. That's number one. Also, I think when she talked about, uh, after she talked about all the process and she said, hey, the lesson learned is being patient. I feel like uh, number one, between the process, the end of process uh, description and the lesson learned, it behind some uh, transition, make it not that sounding. And number two, maybe you can uh, articulate why the patient being so important as a lesson. Uh, that's all I can say for, for now. And uh, back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Well, thank you, Li Sing, for that very thorough evaluation. And next up, we have Pamela Benjamin evaluating Angela Heath's speech this evening. Pamela, let's hear from you. Angela, I've heard this speech before. And I really, really like the premise of the entire speech where you're thinking, you're challenging us to think broader than how we usually perceive of the economy and our positions in our job. And I think you did an incredible job by putting all those different people up there and how they changed their life. There was one who was an engineer and he was now doing PowerPoints. Who would have thought? Who would have thought you could make money doing PowerPoints, being an engineer, and then transition? So I really, really liked it. I think once you got past those individuals, then you started to get broad generalizations about rethinking. And then your challenge to the school, I think it was a great challenge. Your slide was really a big, inter it was a big impersonal room. I would like it if you had done a bit more of a contrast compare. A, not change the curriculum, but yet get challenge students. Like if you would have used a picture that was more about interpersonal, challenging your students to think differently, because that's where a lot of the change really happens is those interpersonal and that challenging of the ideas. So I love the some of the slides at the very beginning. I loved how dynamic one of them I felt I was on the Starship Enterprise and I didn't know how that was with the gig economy. So I, I know you came up with this at the last minute, but in closing, I will say that I loved all the different examples. I never would have put those all together. I think that even this would, I know you like to write books. This would be a great idea for all these different people that you've researched to put into a book on how that they, they reinvented themselves. So I think your ideas is absolutely incredible. I'd love to hear more. I would love to for you to throw out some ideas on how teachers can help their, their students with more ideas. I think that is really what you bring to the table. You get people really fired up and thinking differently. So incredible speech, incredible ideas, more drill down of how of that call to action for those people and how they can change their lives. Awesome. Thank you, Pamela. A lot of actionable thoughts there for our Angela. And I could see her wheels turning already. All right, um, timer, have both evaluators qualified? Well, yes, Madam General Evaluator, both uh, evaluators qualified and I'm going to post their times in the chat box. Uh, Rick, can you send out the link? That has been done. Thank you, sir. Okay, now we're going to go on to our role players. So, ah, uh, counter Marty, uh, would you care to give your one minute report?
Okay, I'm unmuted now. Can you yes, hear sir. me? Excellent. My report is that we did astonishingly well. I picked up a couple of odds, one from Tricia, I think, one from David, I think. I tell you, I think because they were not exactly, ah, just a, a sound. I also thought I caught April using a long pause and whether she did it because she was looking for a dramatic effect or because she was trying to decide what to say next, I'm not sure. But that's what it comes down to. We are a very professional group of speakers. And it's been my pleasure to recognize that tonight. Back to you, ma'am. Marty's back in the house. Glad to have you back with us, Marty. All right, our next role player is Mr. Jim Barber, who stepped in at the last minute to be our grammarian. Jim, can you give us your one minute report? With pleasure, Madam General Evaluator. Before the meeting even started, during our self-introductions, Graham, I think it was, used the word palindrome. I loved that. And the question came up of what is a word called that it looks the same upside down? I didn't know it at the time, but that word is called an ambigram, A-M-B-I-G-R-A-M. Now, as far as our meeting goes, Tricia used the word, she, she used the word voice. She said, I love a voice. I love the word voice. It's a simple word, but it's so powerful. It packs so much of a punch. Great word. I love that. On the other hand, a different sort of thing, Angela used a whole bunch of words that didn't even exist several years ago. I love that. She talked about the gig economy, uh, knowledge broker, market gap, setting kids up for yesteryear, building your gig pyre. I love that English is so flexible that new words are created as they're needed. And Angela just gave us a plethora da -da, of those great words tonight. And that's my grammarian report. Back to you, Madam G. Wow, you fit a lot into that one minute. Good job. Our next reporter is Mr. David Carr. He is our watcher. Tell us what you saw, David. You remember one of those evenings where about halfway through the meeting, you realized that you kind of forgot what it was that you were supposed to be doing in the course of the meeting, what you're supposed to be paying attention to. So, so I, I have a little bit of that guilt going on. I do have a couple of things to, to point to. Lucas, I noticed you actually look like you're in a fog or something. I think it's something to do with a combination of lighting in the room. I think you're using maybe the blurred background effect that is creating some of that, but uh, yeah, it's just, I, I don't see you. You're a little bit ghostly uh, this evening. I was enjoying the light bulbs in the background. Marianne had it, and then uh, Pamela put that up a little bit better. Pamela also made very skillful use of Prezi tonight, and I will leave it at that. Well, thank you kindly, sir. And our final reporter of the evening is our chat monitor. Ms. April LZ. April, what are people talking about today? Thank you, General Evaluator. The chat was fairly active during today's meeting. The chat was used to educate, to inform, and to provide speaker feedback. Our Toastmaster Graham shared some additional resources relating to creating podcasts. If anyone's thinking of gifting Toastmaster Andrew Byrne a gift, think about Tesla, because he shared in the chat that a Tesla should be parked in his carport. Toastmaster Trisha Smith, she shared some interesting information about chemist Linus Pauling. And in today's general evaluator, Mary Ann, she shared her Thomas Edison quote. So thanks for everyone today for an engaging chat. Back to you, general evaluator. Thank you so much, April. Now I am going to ask Mr. Oh, actually, no, I'll give you my general evaluation. Uh, I did note that uh, tonight our Toastmaster was not ready to go at the beginning of the night. And we are an advanced club. And while tonight we didn't have guests to be filling in the agenda at the very last minute. So I might suggest 
to look at it the day before to make sure the roles are filled. And if they aren't filled to ping a few people and see if you can get them to sign up and make sure that you have intros and things like that in advance. Uh, I will also challenge everybody to look at the camera a little more. I notice a lot of people reading. I notice a lot of people uh, kind of just looking at their screen rather than looking at the camera. And if you want to connect with your audience, you really do have to look at the camera. So you don't have to do it constantly, but I noticed that a lot of people didn't uh, make eye contact with the camera. So just uh, be aware that you know we are you know a very visual club, so we want people to see that that you're making connections with them. I let's see. I thought Pamela's uh, table topics was phenomenal. Went great uh, with the theme today and it was really engaging. We had a lot of thought provoking questions and really great responses from many people. And that is my report for today. And I will ask Mr. Rick Derling to let us know who our winners are tonight. All right, I'll post it in chat in a moment, but our speaker was Angela Heath, congratulations. Our best evaluator was Lee Sing Zhu. Congratulations. And Toddy, my own horn, apparently I got the most votes as table topics. Congratulate me. Okay, back to you, Mr. Toastmaster Lou Brown. Thank you very much, Marianne. Madam General Evaluator, appreciate that. Wonderful meeting. We're going to end a few minutes early. Before we do so, a couple of Quick announcements. One is that we need to fill roles for next week. Please go to the website and sign up for a role. And I'm sure our VPE will be sending out an email in that regard as well, since we have a lot of folks who are not with us this evening. And I'd also like to ask our VPE if he has any announcements to make, anything short and sweet that you'd like to share with the club. If so, feel free to do so now. Thank you, Lou. I can share for those that have officer roles that need training still that there is a COT or officer training session at District 47. Contact me and I can give you the sign up information or you can go to their website. But they are having a session tomorrow uh, on the 22nd at 7 o'clock, I believe. So I would recommend that to anybody that's interested in that. And I think David is still looking for people for the VTM. And the schedule only has, as I put it in the chat, the schedule only has two people that have uh, notified us that they're, they're participating in a role. One is April for the odd counter, and the other is uh, BDC for topic masters. That leaves a lot of empty roles three speeches, three evaluators, Toastmaster of the Day, which you can get credit for in Pathways if you submit for it, and a number of other things. So I've been told that uh, people don't like to uh, go through this routinely at the end of the meeting, but we have seen how people have gotten lax in not filling in roles either. So whatever your pleasure is, Mr. Toastmaster, uh, Mr. President, I think we should thank you, yeah. identify one Toastmaster of the day. Uh, thank you, yeah. And I think, I'm not sure it's that people don't like it. I think it's that there may not be everyone present that we may otherwise need to fill in the role. So that's where some of the challenge comes in. Uh, by the way, we have a few contests coming up, do we not? Yes, April 21st and March. Yeah, put my sheet. It's both in March. March 7th, we're doing video speech contest. And uh, March 21st, we'll be doing the webinar contest. The winner of the webinar contest goes on to VTMCon to compete with uh, members of other clubs for that. We For the video speech contest, because of a rule change, we are particularly encouraging, or I think we, we really might want to limit it to people who are not a member of a districted club. There are only an OP member. We, we have a, we have a few of them, because the the new rule is that uh, the video speech contest is only for members of undistricted clubs. You're disqualified if you're also a member of a districted club. 
uh, for that. So it's a or an undistricted club that belongs to a district because that's an option for an undistricted club as well. Well, it it, it it goes by the individual. The rule is by the individual, not by the by the club affiliation. Right. Um, but um, but it was for for people who are hanging out there and don't have a a district to, to compete in. I guess. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And I'm sure an email will be going out over the next few weeks or so with a little bit more information and a reminder on those dates. Madam Vice President of Membership, do you have any information to share, any updates you have, announcements, et cetera? Uh, no announcements at this time. We do have a new member coming on board on April 1st. Uh, that would be that Maggie that we spoke of. Yeah. Uh, I, she did respond to my email and uh, she said she is unable to make our meetings until April 1st. Thank you. So that means we will have a vote for Maggie's request to join our club. Since her desire to join won't be until late, but we have a little bit of room to play with there, but we'll probably do that next week or the week after just to get it out of the way. Makes sense to do that. So we'll also send out an email to encourage folks to join us next week. Okay, feel free to stick around if you have time for our after hours gig. Hey, see, we can use that word two ways, can't we? For our after hours gig. And this meeting is now officially closed.